just small things like that that God shows us that he's doing interesting things 24-7. Isn't that true? I want to tell you that um, I asked Pastor David to do something for me next Sunday. Uh, Pastor David shared just briefly with us the story of God's sovereignty, providence, God's grace that he experienced through the loss of his young son. And you need to hear this story as well. It will be a story that will encourage you, that will touch your heart, and it will be something that you will never forget. And he's going to, he's willing to do that this coming Sunday. He's going to, and, and I'm wanting to do this in light of what we're, what we've been sharing and some of the things that we've been sharing over the last number of weeks. And, um, he has agreed to do that. So look forward to that and maybe invite someone here that could be touched by such a testimony that would be so, so moving and so touching to you. Today, we're continuing. I don't know. I just continue as the Lord inspires us to continue in the book of Joshua. I started on this message Wednesday, and I've been preparing it ever since and being touched by it day after day. Trusting God with our Jordans and Jerichos. How many knows that we're not the children of Israel, but we are God's people? Yeah. And we have our Jerichos, and we have our Jordans as well. Father, speak to us today again by your word. Speak to us deep into our hearts and make it real to us. Holy Spirit, anoint the word of God and make it believable and make it real by the anointing of the word. In Christ's name, amen. We all have to face our J and J's in our journey of faith. Trusting God is the path that we have to follow to victory. Joshua 3, 9 through 17, in portions of it. Now the Jordan overflows its banks throughout the harvest season. But as soon as the priests carrying the ark reached the Jordan, their feet touched the water at its edge. And the water flowing downstream stood still, rising up in a mass. Oh, wow. And the people crossed opposite Jordan. All Israel crossed on dry ground until the entire nation had finished crossing the Jordan. Wow. I know that there's times in my journey that I could walk up to the Jordan and didn't even have to put my feet in. And God would remove obstacles. God would do miraculous things. And I would get so excited how God would move in such mighty ways. Maybe I needed $100,000 and God supplied it for we were building a church. And it could, there's so many experiences. But then the next time when I needed another miracle, I went to the same way. I went right to the Jordan, stood there and prayed, and nothing happened. I did it just like I did it before. But God said, you got to go a little deeper this time. I'm going to make you get into the water just a little bit. And then the miracle would happen. And then sometimes a little deeper, a little deeper, until it was like the waters coming out from the altar. It was to the knees and to the thighs. And then it was waters that overwhelmed that we could swim in. God, test us. And our journey, trusting God with our Jordans and our Jerichos is a part of our journey and part of our faith walk and part of our growing, part of our growing. When Jonah and I were baptized in the Jordan River in Israel and our friends with us, it was not that deep or that wide. It was pretty narrow and pretty shallow, by and large, but up to here, I guess. And um, but it was very cold. 
I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you, my body can't take cold water. I won't even get in a swimming pool that's, that's not heated. I can't do it. I just can't take cold water. I mean, I, 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 I actually had come 6,000 miles, and I had to come back, Pastor Dave, with bragging rights. So I said, my heart may stop, but maybe somebody can lay hands on me, and I'll come back to life. I can't take cold water. I, can't, I just can't do it. And I'm going to tell you, I stepped into that Jordan River, and it was so cold. Pretty soon I didn't feel none of my body. I mean, I just, wherever my body was covered water, I didn't even feel it no more. I, I didn't know if it was there. It was so cold. When I came up out of that water, I was so glad my heart was still beating. I'll tell you the truth. That was some, that was some deal, buddy. That was some deal. But in, uh, in a book written in 1854, it describes the Jordan as being 100 feet across with a depth of 10 to 20 feet and was described as a stream so swift that it was too difficult for swimmers to cross. It was that swift. In a 1935 picture of the Jordan at flood stage, with melting snows of Mount Hermon rushing down the Jordan Valley, turning this little Jordan River into a deluge, a gentle river into a deluge, it soaked the ground on both sides, both banks. As the flood waters recede, farmers, they say, would go out as the waters are receding from the banks of the Jordan. They would throw their seeds upon the water, and in this way, they planted some crops beside the waters of the Jordan. This could be the meaning of Ecclesiastes 11.1, 1, cast your bread or seed upon the surface of the water, for after many days you may find it. How many of you have ever had to cast your seed upon the water, your bread, and trusting God to multiply, trusting God to do a miracle? Come on. When we find ourselves facing our Jordan, we must remember it's all about trusting God to turn our problems into pathways. Again, I mention it again, Brother Ed leads that song. Gardens, cemeteries into gardens, waterways into highways, come on. Psalm 66, 6, he turned the sea into dry land, and they crossed the river on foot. There we rejoiced in him. How many came through some deep waters, and the Lord brought you through? David said, he brought me out of the deep miry clay. He set my feet upon the rock to stay. He established my going and my coming. Oh, you glad that he brought us up out of the deep sea out of the cross the river on foot there he we rejoiced in him we have to admire the faith of these Israelites at God's command they loaded up their families their belongings and marched toward the swollen the Bible says it was swollen river preceded by the priest bearing the ark of the covenant that ark overlaid with gold with the jar of manna representing the bread of Christ the bread of life and the tablets representing the Ten Commandments and Aaron's rod that budded this is all found in Hebrews 9 4 as the Ark of the Covenant went first with the priest the others would follow behind Robert Morgan's description goes as follows it's as though an invisible glass barrier a divine dam fell across the river the water parted the ground solidified and thousands of Israelites passed over dry shod. Just as their parents had marched through the Dead Sea 40 
years earlier. The same God who led them out was leading them on and into his provisions and his promises. Aren't you glad the same God that led us out of bondage, out of Egypt, is still leading us onward? Come on. A strong faith of a new generation turning, trusting God, they crossed over into that promised land. And I like Joshua 3.10. says, the living God was among them. He said, he will without fail drive from them before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Parasites, and the, and the Gergesites, and all the sites. And <laughs> he's going to drive them out before you. I love that. Note, note this. The prophet Elijah and Elisha later, by the power of God, performed the same miracle near the same spot at the Jordan River. The waters departed for Elijah and Elisha. Think about it. Centuries later, at roughly the same spot, the Lord Jesus went into the Jordan and was baptized. But the waters did not depart for him, but the heavens opened up and the dove came down. This is my beloved son in whom I am well placed. Come on. Think about that. That's why I had to go in that crazy river, that cold river. I had to. After going 6,000 miles, I had to do it. Didn't know if I was going to live through it, but I had to do it. What a sacred spot. What a lesson for us to learn. God knows how to turn problems into pathways and barriers into breakthroughs. He was saying to us, go forward by faith, cross your Jordan, and take possession of what God has promised. There's a lot of things that God has promised us in his word. And some, I've heard ministers say it this way, God has storehouses you haven't even visited yet. You don't even know where, where those storehouses may be. But he has storehouses that you have not known and have not visited that he wants to open up to us. If we can just believe his word and go and take possession of all that God has promised to us. He's promised so much to us. Don't you believe that? <coughs> That Joshua 3.10, the living God was among them. Aren't you glad he's among us today? He's among us. You see that ark going across the water, the picture that uh, Miss Barr found for me to, for today's message. 1942, Pastor Oscar Carl Ellison, Swedish-American evangelist, wrote a course based on the Jordan River crossing. Got any rivers you think are uncrossable? Got any mountains you can't tunnel through? God specializes in things thought impossible. He can do the things others cannot do. We put in a bracket later on when we sang it back in those days. We sung it, the last phrase, this way. He can do what no other power can do. I think we kind of altered it a little bit over a period of time. But Pastor Oscar Carl Ellison wrote that. And it, was, and it was a song similar to that, very similar, but it wasn't so much about God, but it was a song that the workers on the Suez Canal would sing something kind of similar as they would work. And so many died there in the building of the Suez Canal with malaria, I think it was. And, and, and they had a song that was kind of similar, and I think he must have seen that song and based this upon the Jordan River crossing and upon on what these men would sing as they worked in a, a very difficult project that was absolutely amazing project of the Suez Canal. But what about but what about the big what if? There's always the what if. 
and there is the if only. I mean, we got the what if and the if only, you know, going as well. Uh, very, very true. What about the what if the river doesn't part? Good question, right? And the Lord works in many different ways. Not always as we might expect, people. Not always as we were hoping or expecting for him to work. It's true. And this is not in your notes, but in that little blank space beside that, put Psalms 18, 16. Psalms 18, 16. Pastor David, my sermons are never ready to preach until I stand up. You know how it is. You just keep adding stuff. The Word of God is unsearchable. It's just, it's just unbelievable. You just, you can work on a sermon for your whole life. One sermon. Your whole life. Keep adding to it. There's no into it. It's unbelievable. David said in Psalms 18, 16, he reached down from a high, from on high, and took a hold of me. He pulled me out of the deep waters. Did you like that? He reached down from on high and took a hold of me and pulled me out of the deep waters. You know what those waters can be. They can be depression. They can be sorrow. They can be so many things that can affect our lives. But God is faithful. God is faithful to reach down and pull us up out of the deep waters of life. Aren't you glad for that? Because some of y'all know that. You've already felt his hand. You felt his pull. You know that he brought you up out of that. You know. Articles written on backpacking reveal river drownings cause more death than snake bites. The best way to cross a river is with a pole with a rope under one's armpit, kind of up here, connected to a secure object like a tree or a large bolter is the safe way, they say, to cross a very strong moving river. Thank God our Lord Jesus has already crossed the river of every challenge that we'll ever face. I said, let me say it again. Thank God our Lord Jesus has already crossed the river of every challenge we will ever face. Do you believe that? He has secured the rope of grace to the tree of God's omnipotence. We simply hold on by faith and proceed one step at a time. Isaiah 43, 2. It is a great verse to grip on while you're crossing. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. Come on. One translation says, deep waters, great troubles, rivers of difficulty. We know what this means. When you pass, and then the scripture verse finishes out and says, and the fire will not burn. One of the great testimonies of a businessman, a great businessman who was in the Canary Islands when the two planes collided. The, 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 one of the great horrible uh, plane tragedies of our time in the Canary Islands. And he was a businessman who loved God. He knew the Word of God. He could, he could just about quote the Word of God. And he did. He said as the jet fuel was coming down the aisle and the flames were on top of the jet fuel coming down the aisle of the plane as those two planes collided on the tarmac in, in the Canary Islands. He said people were cursing and swearing as they were being burned and as they were dying. And what he was doing was quoting scripture and he quoted, he quoted Isaiah 43 too, and the waters and the fire will not burn you. As soon as he quoted several verses plus Isaiah 43 too, he saw a big hole up in the plane and he said that's my rapture hole and he got up through that hole and he was spared. He was only a very few that were spared in 
in that, in that crash of the Canary Island. But he, while others were cursing and dying, he was quoting scripture. And he quoted Isaiah 43 too. Come on, people. John Ross Macduff said, Many pilgrims passing through these Red Seas and Jordans of affliction will be enabled in the retrospect of eternity to say, We went through the flood and there we rejoiced in Him. Come on, give praise to God in this house today. We rejoiced in Him. Trusting and obeying God is the only way to conquer the Jerichos in your life. Let me read something about Jericho. For years, skeptics scoffed at the story of Jericho. And they scoffed it a lot. You know, one time they said the, the Red Sea was only a, a foot deep. And some lady went crazy in the back saying, Oh, it was a greater miracle for all of Pharaoh's army to drown in a foot of water. It's a greater miracle. When you start messing with the miracles, you'll make them better if you're not careful. But people doubted the, the Jericho account. The archaeologists, anthropologists, all these people doubted. But in an article in New York Times entitled, Believers Score in the Battle over the Battle of Jericho, John Noble Wilford, a Pulitzer, Pulitzer Prize winning science journalist, after years of doubt among archaeologists, new analysis of excavation has yielded a wide range of evidence supporting the biblical account of the fall of Jericho. Anybody surprised? It may be well true that the words of the old spiritual, Joshua in the battle of Jericho, he said, it's true. He wrote this in the article. It's true, he said. The old song of Joshua in the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. You know that song. You sang it when you were young. You should have anyway. Wilford described the, the, the archaeological remains of pointing to the accuracy of the biblical account. And he quoted a Canadian archaeologist, Dr. Brian G. Wood, who concluded when we compare the archaeological evidence at Jericho with the biblical narrative describing the Israelite destruction of Jericho, we find quite a remarkable agreement. Somebody say amen. amen. I just thought that would be cool to look at, think about. Trusting and obeying God is the only way to conquer the Jerichos in our lives. Joshua 6, 2 through 5. We didn't put it in there because we're running out of, out of our little canvas here. Reveal the oddest military plan ever given in the history of warfare. Seven days, not a question mark, that's what it got there by accident. Seven days of marching around Jericho with ram horns. So far, they were doing pretty good. <laughs> All right. F. B. Myers said, Those walls fell down smitten by the impact of the celestial host. They marched around six days, and then the seventh day, seven times, and the walls, and they blew the shofar, and the walls. In fact, some theologians say it was almost like the ground had to swallow. If the walls fell over, they'd still be too high. The wall, they had to go down into the ground for them to go straight in to Jericho to take the city. Amazing. Are any of us bearing the strain of a load too heavy, a pain too hurtful, a project too great, an obstacle too overwhelming? It's time to hear from God, time to trust God, time to obey God. His plans may be unlike anything you ever imagined. Stop obsessing over your Jericho and look to Jesus. He can make a way when there is no way. Somebody give a praise to God. I know we're a small group today, but I feel the presence of God here. Yeah. Victory, victory isn't found by pushing through our own schemes. Shall I say it again? Victory isn't found in pushing through our own schemes, but cooperating with what the Lord intends to accomplish in His own way and time. Come on. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Man, there's times that I wanted to do it myself, and there's times I even tried. Man. Do I regret those stupid times? Our 
obstacles are God's opportunities. Our obstacles are God's opportunities. Come on. And they must be encircled his way with biblical weapons intended for pulling down strongholds. You know 2 Corinthians 10, 5 like I do. For our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Come on. It's the word of God, people, and it's true. We, we, God encircles this with the word we encircle that and God acts biblical weapons intended for pulling down we need to encircle our obstacle with power from the presence of him who died and rose again encircle your challenge your problem your insurmountable circumstance surround it and encircle it with power the power of him who raised Christ from the dead Come on. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding and abundant. Ephesians 3.20. Uh, now, now unto him. I like the way it starts out. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding and abundant. In case you didn't get there. Above all uh, that you ask or think or even imagine. The Amplified says. Of that power that works through you and in you. We, we have to encircle, we have to surround that overwhelming thing with his power. We have to encircle our obstacle with prayer like Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles chapter 20. In fact, I preached a message on Second Chronicles chapter 20 about Jehoshaphat and the title of the message is, What do you do when you don't know what to do? That was the message. And what do you do when you don't know what to do? Well, the best thing to do is start praying and seeking God. And that's what Jehoshaphat did. He, the, the, the Moab and the Ammonites were coming against the people of God. In chapter 20, 1 through 20. Jehoshaphat, verse 3, and Jehoshaphat feared. Well, it was the kind of fear, not fear with torment. It was a fear that drove him to God. And sometimes we need something that will drive us to God. And press in and see what he will do. It says in verse 3, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast through all of Judah. Come on. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Verse 4. Verse 17. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still. Or the Italian version. Just stand still. Shut your mouth and see the salvation of the Lord, O Judah and Jerusalem. Don't be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. He will fight the battles, what he's saying. Come on. Come on. How do you deal with your Jericho? You've got to start believing that God's power is greater to bring down those walls. You've got to encircle it with prayer. They went around those walls, around those walls, encircled the obstacle with God's promises. Listen, the Israelites took the commander of the Lord of hosts at his word. They didn't know exactly how it was going to happen, but they believed what God said, and they obeyed. They believed what God said, they obey. Listen, do we believe what's in that book? We believe it. Come on. If your obstacle, your, your thing that you've got to deal with, you've got to encircle it with God's power. Encircle it with prayer, like Jehoshaphat. Encircle it with God's promises. They believe what the word of the Lord, what was spoken. Encircle it with perseverance. They marched around the city. It was only about one half mile, a little over one half mile. When you do the dimensions of the city, it really was going around about a little over half a mile. So it didn't take a lot of strength. It just took consistency and perseverance. I mean, those consistency and perseverance will bring a lot of good things to pass. I thought I'd never get my car paid for. But it's amazing. If you make a payment every month, 
it's amazing. If you're on time making your payments, eventually you pay the thing off. About a year and a half ago, we paid ours off, and I, I have a lot of miles on it, and sometimes I get worried traveling. But, man, it's so nice not to have that payment. Time and consistency will make things happen. You can, you, can, so you can put just a little bit of money in the bank for an emergency account. Just a little bit on a consistent basis. And pretty soon you've got all this emergency money there waiting to help you when you need help. Time and consistency, perseverance is a very powerful thing. And they obeyed God and they marched around that city as they were asked to do. It was strange. Don't you believe that was a pretty strange military way of taking on a city? Just march around it, you know, with a ram's horn. So far, they were doing good. <laughs> okay. And encircle your obstacle with praise. When you combine God's power for presence and prayer and promises, perseverance and praise, you create a vibration of victory that rattles walls and with the help of the angelic host dislodges stones demolishes strongholds come on it will do it it will bring down the walls and the praise of God will break down the house come on remember Satan inhabits the complaining I didn't use the B word Satan inhabits the complaining of people but God inhabits the praises of his people come on I said God inhabits the praises of his people when you cross over don't forget to give a shout of victory come on let's stand to our feet and give we got a oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, God is so good, isn't he? God is so good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Let the Lord speak. Oh, God. Yes, Lord. receive that from the Lord today. Yes. Oh, God. I need you more, more than yesterday. I need you more, 
more than words can say I need you Lord more than anything I need you Lord I need you Lord more than the air I breathe more than the song I sing more than the next time goes by I will be by your side cause I never want to go back to my old life I need you Lord oh yes Lord would you kind of make your way forward and pick up your communion have communion that's not been touched or we have others that are prepared for you either way if you just come and gather that and receive that if you would cup of the New Testament of his blood he says you have to do this to remember me we do this because he asks us to and because we want to remember what he did for us George would you lead us in prayer for the the cup and the bread and the cup before we partake of it precious Lord we know your passion because your word tells me. By faith, we are the benefactors of it. Father, we give you thanks and praise that your body was broken in our hands and your blood poured down that cross and over us in this body. 
this and we do the plan. <coughs> and we do come here yes. to this place and this time to remember that. And we give you thanks to pray Christ's name. Would you kind of gather over here? I'm going to do something that nobody knows I'm doing, and I even, even I don't even know. <laughs> Stand with me, dog. Don't you? You gonna play? You gonna sing with me? Here, grab that. Okay. Joe, you can cut this. I gotta sing Allison's song that was in the message today. Some of you may know it. I don't know that I've ever played it. I may have. I don't know. So I'm going to have to figure out what key I'm going to play it. <laughs> Oh, just 